Hi. <clears throat> now today we're going to start discussing biomolecular principles. So <clears throat> understanding the central dogma of molecular biology and the concept of biological transcription and translation will be studied. As the first step, we want to start more delve into the DNA structure. So let's discuss genome, genes, and proteins. The genome is the complete set of genetic information which is embedded in our DNA. And what is gene? Gene is the functional unit of the genome. In fact, it's just physical segment of DNA that direct, indirectly codes for a functional, the final product, which is a protein product. And what is protein? And protein is the molecular machines that responsible for all the cells, structural and functional properties. For example, structural protein as a collagen, uh, which is the most abundant proteins uh, in our body, and enzymes are proteins and antibodies, uh, which will be an important immune function as a, also protein. So in biology <clears throat> and biomedical science, the biggest question is, in terms of genetic point of view, how genotype or genetic composition determines our phenotype, which is observable traits such as eye color, blue eye color, <clears throat> that's responsible for development, physiology, behavior, and many diseases. So in the beginning, uh, people propose the, the role of one gene will um, produce one enzyme or one protein. So it's one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. And that means a gene specifies a protein in a one-to-one -one relationship. While um, this is turned out to be not completely true, but this provides us a very good idea. So how many genes in our body? Um, so the number of genes in the DNA and that gene will encode for one functional protein. Uh, in fact, some genes encode uh, proteins <clears throat> that are not enzymes, such as antibodies or structural components. And some genes encode a subunit of a protein, not a whole protein, such as a, a tertiary structure, which is a subunit part of a quaternary full functional protein. And sometimes some genes do not encode the polypeptides, uh, which is functional RNA molecules. Uh, rather than polypeptides, such as transfer RNA or ribosomal RNAs. So this is a reference material, uh, but I want to go through a little bit of a detail of nucleotide, which is a molecular building blocks of DNA and RNA. So nucleotides are organic molecules that serve as a monomer unit to form the nucleic acid polymers, such as DNA and RNA. So these are real building blocks composed of three unit subunit molecules. So that is, you can see a nitro nitrogenous base and five carbon sugar. You see this uh, pentagon structure, and this is five carbon sugar, either ribose or deoxy ribose. And you can see here, if this is uh, two, carbon number two, if it's OH, that is ribose, and if there's a no oxygen, that's a deoxy ribose, then it, it becomes a DNA subunit. And at least one phosphate group, you can see here, one, two, three phosphate group. And so, except this phosphate group and this nucleotide called its nucleoside. And this is a nucleoside monophosphate, diphosphate, and triphosphate. And this base, uh, determines the kind of nucleotide. So you can see this is a double ring structure, which are purines uh, containing adenine or guanine, or a single ring structure called the pyrimidines, are cytosine, uracil for RNA, thymine for DNA. So the structure elements of the nucleotides and the phosphate group bearing nucleotide. Now let's get into a little more detail of molecular basis of this DNA structure. And as I alluded, 
this five carbon structure of ribose and deoxyribose. You can compare which part is different. Yes, this number two carbons and there's an OH, there's an H. So, and um, on the left hand side, so this is adenine and thymine. You see there's a hydrogen bonding, two hydrogen bonding makes them as a complementary uh, to interact with each other, while guanine and cytosine are having three hydrogen bonding. So that gives us specificity for AT or GC. In RNA case, instead of thymine, uh, it goes to A, U, uracil. And you look at this between thymine and uracil, what are the difference? You can see here, this is CH, this is C, CH3. So those are slight differences are between RNA and DNA. So DNA of a typical our human cell contains 3 billion nucleotides, which is amazingly huge and which make up its uh, genome, the whole uh, nucleotide sequence. And gene is a segment of DNA that calls for one polypeptide chain. So that we call a gene. And de depending on DNA and RNA, you can see what are the differences between here. We can see this uh, five carbon sugars are different. So that's a pentose, uh, either oxy or deoxy. And bases in DNAs are A, T, C, G, or adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, while RNA, the others are the same, while this, there's no thymine, instead it's becoming a uracil, like here. And uh, their physical properties could be very different. Usually RNA is present as a one strand. So its RNA is known to be very unstable, while DNA is usually double-stranded, so it's more stable and sticky. So here comes a uh, picture I put, and it's a historic picture as this is uh, James Watson and this is Francis Crick. And we, when they first came up with the idea of this double helical DNA model, so this is what they produce a uh, model of adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. So it's like three-dimensional puzzle making. So puzzles are important. And uh, the importance of this um, mother is it automatically gives rise to uh, the secret of heredity and DNA copying mechanism. Because we are always uh, at the time curious how a single cell divided into two with exactly the same cell, having exactly the same genetic information. How, how would that be possible? And that's really important question to ask. And that functionality lies in the structure of this double helical structure. And right at the time, you remember that the Nature paper is 1953. So earlier than uh, Linus Pauling, who is a uh, Nobel laureate and the foundation, uh, founders of the field of quantum chemistry and molecular biology. And he proposed a nucleic acid structure. And you look at this. So here goes this, um, nucleic acid structure, several nucleotide residues are outside. So Watson and Crick, at the time they saw this, they right away recognized the, uh, in the problem of this because this nucleoside residues are outside and sugar bases are inside. But what they, they considered at that time as a double helix model, it's just a beautiful thing because it automatically makes it uh, uh, the copying mechanism automatic, while this triple uh, helix model doesn't fit. So they think this is wrong. And the influence of Linus Pauling can be lied in the Linux operating system is that name is coming from the Linus Pauling. 